In this video we're going to look at the end of month procedure in REI Master. In performing this procedure you must have completed your daily duties throughout the month, things such as your receipting and your balancing, applying your charges where necessary, making one-off payments, checking your tenant ledgers and accounts and also your owner and supplier ledgers and accounts to ensure that they are up to date with the current charges applied correctly. To perform the end of month procedure you click on the end of month button at the top here You'll then ask to confirm that you're completing the end of month for the correct period. In our case here, we've got our computer date the 31st of August. We are completing an end of month for the August period. If our computer date was the 1st, the 2nd, the 3rd of September, we're still finalising an August end of month. As it notes here, when, you, when this process is complete, we'll not be able to adjust or change any transactions in this month. We click yes to continue. And we've now got a four page, eight step wizard that we will complete to ensure that the end of month is processed correctly. Step one is to perform a banking close. And before you, do, before you perform this step, you should have processed all your receipts, your payments, charges and journals. All those things that I mentioned that you should lead up to doing to get to the end of month steps there. Any transactions processed following this process will appear in the next disbursement cycle. So we'll just click into the banking close here. What we're looking at to check, of course, is do we have any outstanding cash and checks or FPOS monies sitting in our banking area here that needs to be physically banked or finalised before we can process the end of month. So we've got five steps on here that we would go through to complete the banking. First one is to do a backup into my designated location, of course. Step two is to identify what we're going to bank. If I put the dot here in cash and check deposit only, we can see two cash receipts sitting there. If I select the FPOS only, I have no FPOS monies there. And if I select the cash checks and FPOS, we can see again those two cash checks there. And at the bottom here, we can see the breakdown of the receipts and their payment methods there. So we're going to just bank our cash and check deposit only option there. So it's $1,000 which needs to be banked. If I bank this now, I need to ensure, of course, that I actually deposit that $1,000 physically at the branch so that it can be part of the EFT file or the disbursement payments that I make after I've completed the end of month procedure. Step three is to check that the bank is reconciled or balanced. And here we're looking to ensure that we're in a balanced position. Step four is to finalise the deposit date. So we can change that if we bank that monies earlier in the week. Uh, and we could identify or see it there on our statement. So we're going to include it as a deposit date of today and we're going to finalise those monies. It's now asking us to ensure that we are banking the correct money, so $1,000 in cash. Yes, we want to continue. The receipt register and bank deposit slips can be printed out so that you can physically deposit that monies. And if we have a look at those there, there's your deposit slip, which you can print out and take with you to deposit the $1,000 cash. And this one is a report that identifies the two receipts that are being banked for that total of $1,000 on the 31st of August. So the banking step's been finalised and completed. Step two now is to ensure that we have achieved a three-way balance in our reconciliation screen. If we go to that screen there, it's all our receipts that we process for the month. If I go down towards the bottom here. I have a check which is still outstanding from a few days ago, not appearing on my statement as yet, so we will leave that there. We have a direct credit receipt which we processed earlier for $1,000, and we've also got this deposit here for $1,000, which is the one we just finalised in step one, the banking steps there. This direct credit receipt is already on our statement, so I should be able to tick that one, and of course I would adjust my statement balance accordingly, based on what I can see on my statement there now. So we are balanced there. We should change our balance date up to the 31st. In a balanced position, we have one outstanding check and our outstanding deposit, of course. Again, as I mentioned, in order to finalise this procedure and actually physically disperse monies, we do need to deposit that $1,000 into the bank account. So from here, we have a couple of steps to go through. We need to print off our necessary reports. And under the reports button here, we can print off the five reconciliation reports, such as our reconciliation or three-way balance, our adjustments, cash on hand, unpresented payments, and unpresented deposits. Now, you can click on the print all reports and they will send physical copies through to your printer. The other thing we can do 
is export all of those reports as well and by clicking on that export reports option there I now need to designate a location where I'm going to export those reports to. So on my computer here I've got my little G drive, my uh, USB stick plugged in. I've got a folder here called REI Master Backups. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this one August 2013 EOM for end of month. And I'm going to save or export my reports into that location there. I click OK give the system a moment there to export those reports. They've now been successfully exported to that location. If I go into that folder there, there's my new folder there. If I have a look there, I've got my five reconciliation reports sitting there. We can also see that they've got date and time stamps on them. As I mentioned, we can obviously print all of those reports as well to as hard copies to our printer if you wish to do so. The other thing we will do on the screen here is update our presented now that we are in balance and we've printed all our necessary reports. And what that will do, it will, it will hide all of these reconciled or ticked transactions so that we start with a nice clean slate for the coming month. If I click on my update presented, again it, it asks or informs me that I shall be in balance and have printed our reports before proceeding. And do I want to continue? Yes, I do. And as I mentioned, those report or those transactions are now just hidden, and we're left with only our outstanding transactions showing here, which are our one check there and our cash deposit, which is showing there. Close out of there. Step three is our backup that we're going to do, and this is the first backup we'll do as part of this end of month procedure. So it's the backup before the disbursement step is run. Click on backup here. And we can see here the last known location of where our backups were done. Now I created a folder just a few minutes ago in the previous step there. So I'm going to save this backup into that same location, into that ARIA master backups, and we've got that August end of month folder there. Now the reason I'm going to save it in there, I've already got the reports there. I've got two backups to do as part of this procedure. So it's a good idea to put those backups as part of that uh, complete documentation and data for your end of month procedure. What we're also going to do is back up our document management folder as part of this procedure here as well. So all of those documents you've been linking to charges and payments you've applied to owners throughout the month, that will ensure then that those are backed up as part of this procedure. We click on our start backup, we're asked to confirm that we have enough space on the disk that we're going to save to and we can OK. So the system will then back up your data as one backup it will then back up the document management as a separate backup uh, folder or zip file. And once that's completed, in there, we can have a look in that location again. And we now have, of course, our backup of the data and our backup of our document management system there. When you're doing those backups in step three there, it may take some time for the document management backup to go through depending on the number of and the size of the documents, images or files that you have in your document management system. The next step we go on to, step four, we go to click on the next option there to page two is the disbursement step, page uh, number four there. So we can't reverse this particular step when we go, when, once we go through here. So we have to ensure that we've completed the following tasks. The first one there is to denominate that you've achieved a three-way balance and printed or exported your reports. We've done that, so we can tick the box there. We also have to nominate that we've successfully performed a backup, which is what we just did in step three. So again, tick that box there, and it then allows us to go on to these next steps. First thing we should do is to check any pending transactions. By clicking on that button there, it will take you through to the pending transactions screen there. And I've got one sitting in there for a letting fee against Mr. Harrison. And it shows me here with a tick in the sufficient funds box that there's enough money for me to apply that $550 charge to Mr. Harrison. Now it's important that this money is then charged to the owner as part of this step here. So what we need to do is tick the box to say we want to process that one. And then we must click on the process button here. By clicking process and saying yes, it will actually apply that charge to the owner and we know then that the monies will be deducted from their ledger. Our next option here is to check our owner supplier accounts and by clicking on that option there, we get a nice list of our owners. It will show for you a pre-disbursement balance, so the amount of money sitting on their ledger. 
any admin fees to be applied to them, the commission that will be deducted, any permanent deductions uh, that we've applied and whether we're going to withhold any funds from an owner there. It then indicates the balance that's remaining, i.e. what the owner will receive and their payment method there. It gives us an opportunity here now if we wish to do so to still access an owner's record if necessary to make any adjustments. So things might be you needed to change account details before you run the disbursement step or you need to withhold some monies against an owner which you've neglected, neglected to do so. If we need to do that, and I'll just pick an owner to give you an example here, we can identify an owner here. If we double click that line there, it will actually open up their owner a detail screen there. I can go to the disbursement tab here, and in my case here, I'm just going to withhold some monies against this owner, $500, and we'll just say that's towards the council rates. Save on that there, and when I close that screen, you'll see now that this screen is refreshed, and Mr McCartney now highlighted in blue because it shows here now that we're withholding um, partial funds and that he's still receiving some monies but we've got a reason for withholding those monies on there. So that's one example of being able to access an owner record to make some changes where necessary. The other information of course you can go to and look at using the drop down list here is your suppliers accounts and again just to identify what monies is being held against them there and what, how their monies will be paid out to them and their payment method. Close out of there, we have our admin fees and permanent deductions which will be applied as part of the disbursement steps that we'll run and we also have here importantly a tick in the box to say disperse bonds. It means that if you do have any bonds that are sitting in your bond ledger they will be allocated to a check number in ARIA Master for the total amount sitting in that bond ledger. If you do not wish to disperse your bonds as part of this end of month step you must remove the tick from the box there. If you don't have any bonds sitting in your bond ledger, you have uh, paid all of those out through the month, then it will not matter whether you have the tick in the box or not. No money to disperse, nothing will occur of course. So we're now at the step there we can click on the disperse funds button and allow the program to go through its calculations and apply the right charges and fees accordingly. I click on that there, we're asked if we wish to disperse the funds, do we want to continue? Yes we do. And in doing so you can see the system go through its steps there. The disbursement has now been completed and we can click OK and it then takes us through to page 3 and step 5 where we're able to print and email and or export our reports out of RER Master. So we can see in the list here a number of reports that are available for printing as part of these steps here and with all the ones in the ticks in the boxes they're the reports that will be printed or exported as necessary. So you can make changes here by just removing ticks as necessary and that will not print those reports of course or alternatively you can set up a printing batch and nominate which ones are applied or which ones are ticked accordingly each time. So by selecting or ticking the relevant reports and clicking on print all selected that will then send hard copies of all of these reports to your printer. Your other option of course is to ex click export all selected we're going to save all those exported documents into the same location where we've been doing our backups and the other documents that we exported earlier. So we'll highlight that August 2013 end of month folder again and click OK. And you'll see at the bottom here that the system is going through its little export procedure and exporting all of the reports that you've nominated in the list here. This allows you, if you wish to do so, is to print these reports at a later date if you didn't print them in the previous uh, step there. It also allows you to send copies of all of these documents to your auditor or accountant as necessary. We'll just let the system go through and finalise the exporting of those. You'll see as well that it's exporting copies of the owner statements and supplier statements. Again, they're handy to keep on file. So there we go, the export steps have been completed. And if we go down to have a look at that folder there now, we can see all of the other exported reports showing in the list there, all within that folder that we nominated. We can also email our statements to owners and suppliers at this point in the procedure as well by selecting the email statements button. Our subject shows here as a statement for August 2013 from your business name or company name. The little blurb here in the message is how they can read their statement. It's attached in a PDF format and can be read using Adobe Acrobat Reader. You can also 
add a further attachment here if you wish to do so so something as such as a newsletter or information that's generic that all of your owners suppliers would need to know your other thing that will occur as part of this email step here is any of the additional attachments that you set up during the document management procedure through the month will also go to the owners including their statement and those attachments there click on the send all button here ensure you're connected to the internet of course if you're using the SMTP method if you're using the Outlook send method then it will automatically connect to Outlook in order to send your emails so our step has our email steps have been completed there we can print a summary if we wish to do so and this summary here will show you or identify to you all the emails that were successfully sent from ARIA Master you will note that the email addresses I've been sending to for all of my owners here are exactly the same you of course will have individual emails for your owners we can close out of this screen now that now that we've completed the emailing steps and we can go on to the last page of the end of month procedure and steps six seven and eight step six is to produce the EFT file now this is allowing you to upload this file that's created via internet banking to make a bulk payment to yourself as the manager or business owner your owners and your suppliers who are set up with account details there so click on the EFT button you can see here in the setup that we're going to call the EFT file nab.aba and it's going to save it to the desktop location if we're happy with that location there we'll say yes to continue if we want to change the location of where we save it to we can say no and it'll ask us to nominate a separate location if we cancel we won't create an EFT file at this point if I say yes there we are going to replace any existing NAB files could you imagine if you're doing this procedure every month then each file that's created at the end of month is for that particular month so we do want to replace this one with our current or up-to-date end of month EFT file so yes there and then that file has been saved successfully to our desktop so that when we are on our internet banking and we're browsing to a location the desktop is where we'll find that file do I want to print the EFT file yes I do and that'll actually then be sent directly to your printer step 7 is the backup that we're going to do and this is a second backup in uh, in the end of month procedure click on backup again it's going to go to that designated location that we've nominated before our August 2013 end of month folder we can if we wish to do the document management folder backup again not really necessary because we've actually done it previously and nothing much has changed since then of course so if I do my start backup that backups now completed and we're now on to the last step here step 8 is to finalize the end of month and in fact we're going to roll it over so that all of our owners are starting a new month with a new opening balance we tick the box to print nominate that we printed all the necessary reports or exported them if we've done that and we've also performed a second end of month backup and ticking both of those boxes we now are able to access the roll month button we are asked then in regards to those funds that we're holding for an owner do we want to release those funds there so that we're not holding another five hundred dollars next month against mr. McCartney or if the answer is no to release them then it will withhold another five hundred dollars at the end of next month um, I will say yes because I'm going to use that five hundred dollars as part of my payments to the City Council in this new month and from there our end of month is complete we say okay and we are now in a position to commence the new month of September after finalizing the August end of month if I go to my reconciliation just quickly we can see here now three sorry four more transactions which appear here one two three checks to our owners and then an EFT payment that EFT payment being a bulk amount is made up of payments to the other owners uh, suppliers and ourselves as the manager or business owner you'll also note at the bottom right hand corner there the money's held in trust figure the $500 there that was the $500 we held against one of the owners for their council rates so that money remains in the trust account carried forward into the new month so this video we've looked at the end of month steps or the end of month procedure and how you complete that in the REI master program <laughs>